Hello folks, welcome to another episode at Exchange IT Pro. This is my very first uh, episode or video cast of, ex of uh, Exchange 2019 in the year of uh, January 2019. In this particular episode, I'll be talking about what's new in Exchange. We know that that Exchange has been released a few months ago, uh, but let's look into that, what exactly new in Exchange in this particular uh, video and then we'll have more video coming soon so let's move forward so Microsoft this time has been very a uh, focus on improving the security for exchange uh, 2019 other than uh, on top of that there are some also some improvement but let's talk about the security because exchange 2019 you can only install on Windows Server 2019 uh, and Microsoft or Exchange team recommends that to make the best use of their code or secure code they recommend you to run Exchange 2019 on a Windows Server 2019 core server it doesn't mean that it's not supported on a desktop version of Windows uh, Server 2019 but as per the product guideline that if you really want to run a secure version of Exchange you should be running on a core server so it means that you can have your all server deployed in a core model on a windows server and then you remote in and manage those windows server through a management server so imagine you have a number of servers installed on a core windows server and you're managing through a remote server or remote management server so many people would like it many not it depends how you want to do it and if you don't like it you can still have the option to use the gui interface uh, installation of uh, exchange 2019 and then also another security improvement is you can leverage client access rule uh, to allow administration of uh, exchange within the internal network range uh, without having uh, setting up your firewall rule. so basically we control the access uh, leveraging client access rule. so those are the significant changes from security uh, perspective other uh, than that uh, there were also improvement on the performance side so from exchange 2010 or 7 and beyond we've been hearing a lot about improvement in the IOPS all the way from 2003 to 2013 we have seen a significant improvement in the IOP which was pretty much 99 or 100 percent improvement so there are very significant changes in exchange 2019 and now since the availability of the new hardware more processor more memory cpu and uh, solid state drive exchange product team has really done a good job for exchange 2019 so if you're one of the uh, customers who want to remain on premises and you're very really concerned about the processing of your email and performance of exchange server uh, now exchange server supports 48 core processor cores 256 GB RAM which is upgrade from 192 GB RAM from the previous version and 40, 24 cores to 48 core processor however this does not mean that number of uh, processor cores are double reduced in the less number of uh, processors that's not the uh, case or less number of servers you still have to do your storage calculation to figure out the actual sizing of the server but at the same time of course you, you can host uh, more number of build boxes because the large disk space are supported more processors are supported so definitely you can see uh, less number of servers uh, and you can host many more build boxes they have also introduced or leveraging the bing technology for the search exchange 2019 offers much better search compared to previous version of exchange uh, database failover has been taken to the next level because uh, now your indexing uh, goes with the mailbox unlike previous version you have a different set of, of the index uh, and then server uh, database goes bad indexing has to be rebuilt now wherever your mailbox goes your index goes with that that's uh, another significant change uh, database caching allocation has also been redesigned to allocate more towards active database copies uh, which again improved the end user experience and this uh, overall uh, improvement enabled the large scale number of user per server than ever before and it can allow much larger disk uh, and reduce 50% uh, latency reduction in the client operations. So that's in a nutshell how it's gonna improve. And you might have heard about meta cache, and, but in a nutshell, uh, those are the significant uh, area they have improved in the performance. Now third is productivity, or we can call it end user experience. 
and now exchange 2019 allow do not forward a meeting so if you send an email invite or meeting invite and you do not want that meeting invite to be forwarded and if you do not want that meeting to be forwarded to somebody else so now you can leverage this option and what is not supported if you still have a unified messaging role in your environment whether it's 2013 or 2016 exchange 2019 will not support UMS uh, role so if you are one of those type of organization who want to keep that then you can uh, have exchange 2016 as long as you want it to run uh, in your environment with 2019 in a coexistence. Uh, I hope you like this video, it's informative. In future videos, I'll be talking about some scenarios where it would make more sense to have exchange 2019 or not. Exchange 2019 is available to the volume license copies, not available on retail, so something you can go and buy online. Thanks for watching this video.